as a young boy, on my way to bed, slipping quietly past my parents' bedroom door, my dad's light was always on. He sat propped up on the king-sized bed like a sentry guarding the night. Glasses perched on the edge of his nose, he was typically reading the biography of a great leader. Over time, Dad became a terrific leader himself, building a company recognized as one of the hundred best places to work in Canada. He was my hero. My grandfather was also my hero. In 1911, he designed what was then the tallest building in the British Empire. Later, he was inducted into the Canadian Business Hall of Fame. Both men were visionary, but more importantly, they were known for their integrity. I wanted to be like them and to one day lead our family real estate business. I began following their footsteps. Almost unconsciously, our heroes shape our lives, our dreams, our character. As an aspiring leader, I took on new heroes to emulate. The two most prominent were Vince Lombardi and Winston Churchill. One had a Super Bowl ring, the other led the Allies to victory during World War II. I adopted their mantras. Winning is not the most important thing, it's the only thing. Never, never, never give up. <laughs> Problem was, I wasn't playing football, nor was I at war. Additionally, I was in a hurry to make my mark. But as Warren Buffett has recently noted, the key to everything is patience. You get the chicken by hatching the egg, not by smashing it. Unfortunately, early in my career, I carried a hammer a lot and I smashed a lot of eggs. For example, shortly after joining our family firm, I prepared a career plan designed to equip me for the president's office within 10 years. With my dad's support, I confidently presented it to my uncle, the company CEO. Much to my surprise, he insisted that I couldn't be ready for at least 20 years. He dismissed me as presumptuous. Our discussion disintegrated into a heated argument. As a result, our relationship never recovered and I was dismissed from the company. I forfeited my opportunity to lead a company that might one day become a global enterprise. My career was in tatters. This forced me to rethink a lot of things as I tried to put my life back together. In the 25 years since, I've served as an advisor to hundreds of family enterprise successors. As I've mentored them, I've come to realize that the mistakes that I made, they were common ones. What a difference it could have made had I chosen different heroes. So I did. Change your heroes, change your life. Let me tell you about three who've inspired me. First, John Wooden, the legendary coach of the UCLA men's basketball team. He was extraordinarily patient. Every season, first day of practice, he'd explain to the players the proper way to put on athletic socks. <laughs> Most of the team considered this ridiculous. Can you imagine John Wooden at 5'10", trying to explain to Kareem Abdul-Jabbar at 7'2", how to put on his socks? It took a lot of patience to go through this ritual and to explain why it was even important. Coach Wooden explained the value of this as follows. He said, gentlemen, if we want to win a national championship, we need to play better than our opposition. To do that, we need to practice with more intensity. To do that, we need to avoid getting blisters on our feet. And to do that, we need to put on our socks properly. What an incredible example of patience. Since adopting John Wooden as one of my heroes, I've been cultivating more patience in my own life. Had I done that earlier, the encounter with my uncle, perhaps my entire career could have been radically different. Now, let's consider Benjamin Franklin. 
best known as one of America's founding fathers, he was also an entrepreneurial leader and a diplomat. As a scientist, he's credited with discovering electricity and with inventing bifocals. But for me, his most notable achievement was his pursuit of humility. As a young man, one of Franklin's friends observed that Ben could be a jerk in conversation and always had to be right. He could have been describing me. As a young man, early married, that's exactly how I was. <laughs> Just ask my wife. But Franklin, prodded by his friend's bold critique, decided to mend his ways. He came to realize that humility, properly understood, is not thinking less of yourself, it's thinking of yourself less. He made a commitment to cultivate humility. And to do that, he resolved to deny himself the privilege of ever disagreeing with anyone. With this remarkable approach, Franklin found that his opinions were much more readily received by others. He also became more open to other people's ideas and opinions. Consequently, as an elder statesman during the drafting of the U.S. Constitution, he was successful in diffusing arguments and building consensus. Adopting this approach myself has wrought enormous changes in my life and my heart. I'm now more curious, less abrasive, less opinionated. Even when I disagree, I bite my tongue and try and find something that I can agree with. This has dramatically improved my relationships with our adult children, with my wife, with everyone. It's my little secret. Nobody else knows that I have this ninja move that's changing me from the inside out. Lastly, let's think about Walt Disney. He can teach us a lot about critical thinking. Earlier in my career, I often crossed swords with members of our senior executive. Instead of attacking problems, I attacked people. This ultimately destroyed my credibility and many of my working relationships. In hindsight, I've come to realize that I had allowed a critical spirit to totally eclipse my critical thinking skills. In contrast, Disney was a master of critical thinking. Just prior to the opening of the Pirates of the Caribbean at Disneyland, Walt was making a last-minute inspection. In the area depicting New Orleans, he felt something was missing that could make it more authentic. He asked his team, does it look right? Does it sound right? Does it smell right? Does it feel right? Everything checked out, but Walt felt something was still missing. What is it, he asked. Finally, one of the young employees spoke up. Mr. Disney, I grew up in the South. On a night like this, there ought to be lightning bugs. You know, the tiny little energy superstars? Disney's face lit up. That's it, he said. And so they imported live lightning bugs, at least until they could work out a scheme to imitate them. Did you notice in this scenario, Walt asked a lot of questions without criticizing others? Since adopting Disney as one of my heroes, I've been cultivating my critical thinking skills learning to attack problems rather than people, becoming hard on ideas, soft on people. John Wooden, Benjamin Franklin, and Walt Disney are all heroes worth emulating. None of them are perfect. None of us are. Yet each day they inspire and tutor me, teaching me about patience, humility, and critical thinking. Just like the biographies my dad would read, these heroic figures have become my virtual mentors, helping me to become a better person. I invite you to think about who your heroes are. Is it time for a shift in thinking or a new perspective? The good news is it's never too late. Change your heroes and you will change your life. Thank you.